Still, to right now, as I speak here on the stand, I love them, and I will always love them. These are the words of Gerard Fetty Fettison, as he testified in the trial of Mooney Porter, convicted hitman for Wild Telly Hankin in New Orleans. Fetty and another man named Bino Hayes, who robbed a few banks with Walter Porter, aka Mooney, aka Urkel, they both testified that Mooney Porter told them about the murder of a guy named Jesse Tutu Reed that they had done on behalf of Wild Telly Hankin. It was uh, revenge for the murder of one of Telly Hankin's relatives some years prior. And Telly Hankin ended up getting convicted in a RICO case and of including murder. He's currently serving life in Angola Penitentiary, perhaps the worst penitentiary in the United States. Fettison and Hayes both testified that uh, Porter told them they pulled up alongside Tutu Reed on Troopsicore Street and uh, Hankton jumped out first and fired, knocking Reed down, and then Mooney Porter emptied two extended magazines, maybe 50 rounds into him, which was his trademark. And in fact, the rapper BG liked to reference Mooney Porter, who he grew up with, or he grew up in the same neighborhood, specifically about how many shots he liked to fire into his victims. And that also came out in trial. Fetty had this to say about Mooney's uh, uh, gunman habits. People get shot 50 times, 30 times, 20 times, whatever. He ain't got to stretch it. It's so personal. It's just like wherever they catch him, they kill him. Fettison said of Telly Hankton's motivation for the 2-2 Reed hit. If someone went to kill my family member, it's personal. I want to take part of it. Last year, I did my surviving cash money story about uh, cash money records, and it, it included a chapter about the connection of Hankton hitter Mooney Porter to BG of cash money records. BG is currently near the end of a 14-year federal prison term for uh, weapons violations and witness tampering. And that was the result of being arrested in a car full of guns back in 2010 with none other than Fetty Fettison. Now, Fettison got 20 years in that case for being a felon in possession of firearms and obstructing justice. It was the same case BG is down for now. But Fettison is out. Though he got 20 years of federal time, meaning he was going to have to serve about 17, when the Hankton family, led by Wild Telly, went on trial for RICO offenses in 2016, he cut a deal. That's how he ended up testifying, even though he still loved him. As he said, I understand he testified against Telly Hankton and Mooney Porter, and he got out early, and he's been out for some time. So the way they're all tied together is, I guess this neighborhood in New Orleans is divided into two areas, nicknamed two areas, the money side and the murder side. The Hankins were from the money side and BG and Fetty were from the murder side and so was uh, Hankins alleged hitter, uh, Walter Porter. Now, why is this old case relevant now? Well, here's something interesting. I talked on the phone to Fetty a few times and I was supposed to meet him in Baton Rouge, another city I'm interested in, though he's from New Orleans. I've only been in New Orleans once, but it was one of the few places that made me tell like it was very unsafe. I didn't particularly want to be moving around with him in New Orleans, kind of a hassle. Uh, I've been to New Orleans one time and I was with two lawyers, one of whom was recently indicted when he tried to run for judge and he they had him on the phone talking about cocaine, and the other one was a secretly a one percenter biker, but that's a story for a never time. Now, like I said, judging from his Instagram, Fetty was uh, hanging out, moving around New Orleans like it was all good. And uh, that might sound surprising, but there's real rough guys who get out of prison by any means possible. And they'll go in the street and they'll just tell people what you're going to do about it. 
and usually nobody does anything, and sometimes they do, but these are the kind of guys, if you're gonna do something to them, you better pack a lunch. So I didn't want to be riding around in a car with him. We talked on the phone, I think he has a book he was trying to publish, I don't know. But he's back in jail right now. So he got arrested about a week ago or a few days ago for uh, shooting a car full of four people. No one died, one got hit. So he sure doesn't probably want to hit Louisiana State Penitentiary, but maybe he didn't do it. And whether he did it or not, the New Orleans police are <laughs> notoriously, well, they're underfunded, um, low morale, underpaid, corrupt, incompetent. Um, I remember reading some Houston um, uh, homicide investigators talking about dealing with the Katrina people in Houston and how they would arrest guys from New Orleans for murder. And it was like nothing to them because they were used to New Orleans where they didn't gather any evidence. Someone says you did it, you get taken in, you lay in jail for 72 hours and you go home. So high likelihood Fetty will be back out and uh, perhaps we'll get to do our interview. And um, you know, guys like him are, are a real part of the streets, whether you like it or not. And uh, so check out the Surviving Cash Money story if you haven't seen it. And hopefully I'll get to do more Louisiana content soon. New Orleans, Baton Rouge, super interesting. And those young rappers in Baton Rouge are smart guys making themselves a lot of money, American adult. As most people know, rapper BG, formerly of the Hot Boys, is currently serving a 14-year prison term for weapons charges. Now, just exactly how he got in that predicament is an interesting story. November 3rd, 2009, Christopher Dorsey, AKA BG, was pulled over in a Chevy Tahoe by the New Orleans police in a routine, quote unquote, traffic stop. He just so happened to be with two other guys in a car full of guns. The Tahoe uh, BG was driving had been stolen from an Avis rental car outlet. The two men with him, Demande Pollard and Gerard Fettison, worked for Wild Telly Hankton, who at the time had been declared public enemy number one by New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrew. There were three guns found in the car, two were stolen. Pollard tried to say the guns were his. He ended up getting a 30 month prison term for uh, sort of obstructing justice in that case. BG went to jail. He already had a lot of felonies, so he was facing a lot of time. Not long after he went to jail, he was recorded on the jail phone calling Fettison, and he referenced the fact that he and Walter Mooney Porter, which was Lil Wayne's uh, sub-record label under Cash Money, in which he was the owner of 49% of, is home to Drake and Nicki Minaj, among others, but those two in particular are two of the absolute biggest pop stars of the last 10 years, and they have their own lawsuits going against Young Money cash money, universal records, because Baby and Slim and cash money got that hundred million and didn't want to pay people what they had coming, or so the various lawsuits allege. Uh, album sales for Nicki Minaj and Drake obviously were huge and lots of money was coming in, but universal records was keeping that money and not kicking it to young money because there was still the hundred million dollar advance tab that cash money owed. Not long after the April uh, incident with the tour bus, there was an arrest made uh, for the shooting. Uh, alleged uh, trigger man was a guy named Pee Wee Roscoe. Now, who was Pee Wee Roscoe? He was Young Thug's tour manager, and he was also a self-professed blood gang member. Jimmy Winfrey is his legal name, and phone calls from him to Birdman directly before and after the attack on Little Wayne certainly seemed suspicious um, and made it look like Young Thug and Birdman were in on the crime. Have you come out here and get this money, nephew? This phone conversation was uncovered as part of a separate lawsuit by the tour bus driver, uh, a guy named Alvin Lewis, and he was suing Birdman and Young Thug for the incident. Court documents obtained by TMZ had Alvin Lewis testifying that uh, Birdman offered Jimmy Winfrey, a.k.a. Pee Wee Roscoe, a quarter million dollars and a Porsche to 
shoot up Lil Wayne's tour bus. Jimmy Winfrey, AKA Pee Wee Roscoe, pled guilty in November of 2015 uh, to the attack on Wayne's tour bus. But who is Pee Wee Roscoe? Turns out he was Young Thug's manager. The artist tapped by Birdman to replace Lil Wayne, who went so far as to title his album The Barter, a play on words from Lil Wayne's The Carter series, um, starting with a B, I guess, to, to uh, represent the Bloods. Now, how did Jimmy Winfrey become Young Thug's manager? How did he get, how did he get into the rap game? Another interesting story. When Clifford T.I. Harris got arrested by the feds in a sting while trying to buy a bunch of uh, illegal guns, and he was working out a plea deal that ended up being the most lenient uh, plea deal I've ever heard of in this type of a case. I mean, normally a convicted multiple felon buying a bunch of guns with silencers, I mean, 10 years at least, maybe 20 years. T.I. ended up with a year and a day um, and a bunch of community service. And part of his community service was a TV show called T.I. Road to Redemption. And on Road to Redemption, T.I. Uh, was like intervening and mentoring in some teenagers' lives in the Atlanta area who are getting into trouble. And Jimmy Winfrey, who went on to become Pee Wee Roscoe, who went